Okay, shalom, shalom. Kwam ya sa Allah. Koholoyim la Yahweh b'hashem yawashai b'hashem rikha hakadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well and that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. Just want to state the water toward the Akiyam and Akwaf that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the, stat the statutes and commandments of Yahweh b'hashem yawashai to the best of their ability. This is Yachanan Nawaf. Just coming at you with another quick lesson. I'm praying that it's edifying by the Spirit and wanted to touch on um, Psalms 18 and 23. It says, I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. And in the NLT, it says, I am blameless before God. I have kept myself from sin, right? So now let's we just want to go off into this and get some breakdown on some of these words, right? Because, um, you know, as far as our bodies, we, we, we are in sinful bodies, we, you know, we we do sin on a day to day basis. You know, that's why we ask Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai for mercy. And the ultimate sacrifice that Yahweh Shai made, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus, you know, that that covers us. You know what I'm saying? So but we do try to the best of our ability to keep the law, statutes and commandments of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai and to be pleasing to him. And you have to have faith in what he said, actually, you know, so you can't. It's impossible to please Yahweh without faith. And what are you having faith in? First off, his name, Yahweh, which means that he exists or the existing one. You have to believe that he is, first off. Then you have to most definitely believe on his son. You can't just believe in him and not on his son. You know what I'm saying? His son, Yahweh Shai, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus, his name means savior or deliverer in the Paleo-Hebrew. So you have Yahweh, our father, which means he exists or the existing one. And you have Yahweh Shai, his son. That he's sending for the the salvation or the elect of Israel being brought out of this place when when destruction hits, you know. But his name is Yahweh Shai, which means that he's the savior or deliverer in the Paleo Hebrew, and he's only coming for the children of Israel, the elect of the children of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Which basically this this scripture kind of goes off into. It says, "I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity." Right. And this is going to be an attribute of the elect of Israel. They're going to be the ones that are, you know, that are upright before him, you know, and, and, and that are constantly keeping themselves from iniquity. Now, again, we do live in sinful bodies. We're not perfect until we get those new bodies and become like him in a twinkling of an eye. You know what I'm saying? We're still going to be in these sinful bodies. But guess what? You know. The people that really believe in this truth and really meditate on the, on the scriptures, you know, day and night, like how the Lord said to, and they're constantly just thinking on him and constantly praising him and constantly thanking him. And their whole life is just centered around him on a day to day basis. Then those 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 people are considered to be upright and, and um and perfect in the Lord's eye. Now, again, like I said, do we sin? Yeah, of course we sin. But is it is it? um you know, uh, I always pray to help me to not sin presumptuously. I pray that every day. I pray that a few times a day to help me to not sin presumptuously. And, and that's me, you know, willingly just just jumping out here and sin, man. You know, just, just Jake, just, you know, because you got Christians. They'll tell you they're Christians. They, they got a cross on their neck. Hell, they even got a cross of a damn, uh, 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 a tattoo uh, cross on their damn um, um, arm or something. But they don't keep anything that's got to do with the scriptures, man. They just out here living like complete damn heathen. They have a, um, you know, a, a a look of godliness, but it's not really godliness, you know. So you have the Israelites, you know, that are trying their hardest. You know, it's men that's out here that's really going hard about, you know, this work and trying to please you. How about Shimei man? And 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 a lot of those men are perfect in the sight of you. How about Shimei So let's get off into this word. Now, this word upright in that particular um, verse right there is um, Tamam, H8549. And it's also in the book of Job, which I want to get that too. Because it says perfect in the book of Job. That Job was a man, he was perfect. But it's the same word right here in the Hebrew. H8349, so let's get it. Complete, whole, entire, sound. How are you complete, whole, and, 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 you know, entire and sound? It's through this word. That's what makes us complete. 
It's through the scriptures. It's through what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh said. And you actually having, and actually him giving us the faith to actually, to believe that what he said is true. Because that even the faith is a gift. You see what I'm saying? So, let's see what else they got here. They got entire, literally, figuratively, or morally, without blemish. See? What was Yahweh Shai? Yahweh Shai was without blemish. <laughs> He was a perfect lamb. He was a perfect sacrificial lamb. He was without blemish. And those pretty much that believe on him, you know what I'm saying? You know, the elect that believe on Yahweh's side, they're, they're without blemish too, basically. I mean, you know, because they believe on him, you know, they're, they're, they're being covered by what Yahweh's side done, you know, when he, when he was that ultimate sacrifice. He's the cleansing agent. He's the one that makes it um makes us right with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh's side. That's why it's so important that you you believe, because you got Old Testament um Christians, you got old I mean um Old Testament Israelites that only believe in the Old Testament. They don't believe in Yahweh's side. They really believe that they're they're righteous by their own acts and that you know they they, they you know they're living by the law, statutes, and commandments, and they're not doing anything wrong. But the only way that, the only way that you can be perfect and upright is through Yahweh's side. There's no work that you can actually do. You know what I'm saying? To to save yourself. Now, like I said, again, we do try our hardest. You know what I'm saying? To um keep the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to the best of our ability. Because our Lord kept the um law, statutes, and commandments. Yahweh Shai, he kept the law, statutes, and commandments. He wasn't just doing what he wanted to do. He wasn't like, you know, well, I'm about to get on the cross and I'm going to die for all y'all. You know, we can all just party, you know, like, you know, just party out of control. Oh, don't worry about um the, the shrimp, crab, and lobster thing no more. Well, you know, I'm going to have a pork chop sandwich with y'all, you know. Matter of fact, I'm going to find me, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, I'm just going to do what I want to do. Nah, man, the Lord, he kept the, the law, statutes, and commandments to a T. But he, you know what I'm saying, he was the ultimate sacrifice for us. So now let's go, let's get this word right here. Uh, let's get the entomology on that, H8552. See, it says to, com to, to be complete, be finished, be at an end. And what makes you whole in that way? It's this truth. It's, it's believing on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, his word, and having faith in, 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 in what he said and in, in his son, Yahweh Shai. And that, that's what makes us whole. That's what makes us complete. That why did, um Because you, you have to realize that the Lord, he said, the truth shall set you free. Being free is being complete. Being free is being whole. You know? You're being perfected, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? You know, being free because you believe in what these scriptures say. And because you know it to be the truth. And it's truth shouts that you free. Right? So let's go. Oh, I wanted to um let's go into another word in here. I wanted to get uh it says, and I kept myself. It says, I was also upright before him, and I kept myself. Now let's get this, um, it's a phrase, I kept myself, H8104, it's Samar, Samar, to keep, guard, observe, give heed, see, so what, through the scriptures, you know what I'm saying, and by faith in Yahweh, by Shemiah, by Shai, and having true fear in them, you're going to guard yourself as best you possibly can, you know, and how do you guard yourself, you know, you, you guard yourself with the name of Yahweh, the name of his son, you know, this truth, the scriptures, putting on the breastplate, you know, the faith, this word. See, it, it, it goes in a complete circle. It, it makes you complete. So when things start to get a little bit nuts, so shit start to go in a little bit of a ray. Now you can, you know, you can dig into your completeness, so to speak, or that perfection and say, no, nope, this is not what it's going to, th this is not what it is. This is what the Lord said. And you standing on what the word says, as opposed to what you're saying carnally. You know, that's some, that's somewhat of being perfect. Because even with, like I said, Job, when you go through the, what Job went through, Job, you know, he was saying things, but he didn't sin by the things that he was saying. You know, he was upright. He kept his integrity, even though he was going through what he was doing. He had lost everything. But yet he still, even this woman wanted him to um, curse God. She was like, man, go on and curse God, man, and give up the ghost, basically. 
He's like, um, you, you know, you speak like one of these women of the world. Should we accept good from the Lord and not evil? You know, roughly paraphrasing. And that's that's being complete. That's being perfected to even know that, to even understand that. You know what I'm saying? That the Lord, he, he's the one that um, kills and makes a lie. He's the one that wounds and he's the one that heals. You know, the scriptures even says that he brings down to the grave and bringeth up. It says that he maketh rich and he maketh poor. And by you knowing that, that gives you a, a sense of completeness, of perfection. So that, that, that in turn, you don't buck up against it. You're like, well, the Lord give and he taketh away. And it is what it is. Let's keep on moving. The water. You know, you thank the Lord. You have about Shem because you know that he is all perfect. You know that his judgments are perfect. His judgments are pure and true. And you keep it moving. You're not going to react like um, the average person will react. You know, the average person to get out here, they're, they're complaining, they're murmuring. That's another thing, being complete. You know, you, you, you start to learn to not complain. You start to learn to not murmur. You just, you know, you know that man's goings of the Lord. That understanding kicks in and then it, that, that's what makes you complete and what makes you perfect. Like again, like, like I said again, are we perfect as we don't do anything wrong? No, no, that's not the case. That's not what I'm talking about. But you're not deliberately going out here just doing crazy shit, you know? Because you got Christians, man. They'll tell you they're Christians, man, but I'm telling you, they'll get out here, man, and do whatever. <laughs> you know? Totally um caved to the flesh. They'll they'll tell you they, they they'll tell you they know that what they're doing is wrong. And they'll still do it. But anyway, let's move on. I wanted to get this last word in here. Iniquity. Let's get this word iniquity, right? And it's um a one H fifty seven seventy one. It says perversity. See that? Depravity, iniquity, guilt, or punishment of iniquity. And it's really going off into just being perverse, man. Because when you when you're perverse, you're crooked. You know, you, you're going against um let me see here. Yeah, they have um deprived action, a crime, a sin, perversity. And let's go off and cause I wanted to um because when I was looking at this earlier, I was going off into uh this word perverse. And when you get the uh what what this word actually means, let's let's see what Google has. A see it says a deliberate desire to behave in an unreasonable or unacceptable way. Contrariness, see? You're deliberately. And that's generally not the men of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know. So, like I said, again, do we sin? Yes, we have sinned. Yes, we, we have sin in our bodies. We can sin and we do sin. We do things. But the scriptures talks about how a righteous man, he fall up seven times, but he gets back up, right? But you'll have people that's just, you know, they just out here just deliberately. That's what that this this um, word means. Perversity. Deliberately. It says a deliberate desire to behave in an unreasonable or unacceptable way. Contrariness. What? You're contrary to the scriptures. And they and, and our people, two thirds of our people deliberately go against the scriptures, even though they'll know it's wrong. They'll tell you straight up. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I don't. You know, they got that attitude of just straight no self-constraint no 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 self-control and when you don't have self-control you know what i'm saying you're you're not complete you're not perfect and and when you're when you're dealing in that manner it gets you in trouble because it goes against the scriptures because the lord he placed life and death before us there's no in between if a person is, is perverse and they're moving in that path they're going to eventually be destroyed there's no way around it unless they repent and turn to the Lord, you know what I'm saying? Unless the Lord actually um, caused them to repent, basically, because, you know, still, when the straight comes down to it, no one is actually coming before the Lord. The Lord is actually choosing people, and they're coming to him by his will, because man's goings are of the Lord, you know? But, again, to just be out here just, you know, um, 
going against you know the, you know pretty much again i mean it, this this word it 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 says it perfectly a deliberate desire to believe in an unreasonable or unacceptable way see they believe in it <laughs> they 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 really truly believe in it you like a smash they're not trying to hear nothing about um, no dietary law, not eating pork. When you're trying to tell them, hey, look, well, you know, the Lord said don't eat pork. There's a reason we, we can clearly see that it's not um, healthy for you. I don't give a shit. I'm, I got to have my chitlins. I've been eating pork all my life. I come across people like that all the time. I got a bunch of family members like that. Well, I bet we grew up on pork. We still alive. <laughs> But see, you know, a man's going to the Lord, man. You just never know how long you're going to live. And you don't know what, you know, what, 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 you know, um, how you, how it's going to all come about. Because the Lord, he'll have mercy. But once that door of mercy closes, hey, it's a wrap. You know, you just never know how it's going to end. And, and, and it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So I won't want to be on, on that end of things, you know. I prefer to be in best shape with him as I possibly can. You know, and again, you know, we're we're praying for mercy. That's why we say well, we pray that we're part of the hopefully elect, you know, trying to be humble on that end. Because none of us know our lot. None of us know who we are. Because there are men that have come into this truth and um, they've had what we seem to be perfected or we've seen to be um, upright or perfect. And then, you know, hey, they, they give in, man. You know, the Lord just kind of snatch away, take away his Holy Spirit from them. And they're back out here doing the same shit they was doing before. Like as if they never was even never was even in this truth, and that's scary. You know what I'm saying? We don't want no parts of that. That's why it's always important to pray. Um, you know, that you know, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shalom, and I'll take away um His Holy Spirit from you. See, that's that that that's how David was. That's what David prayed for. David prayed that you know what I'm saying. Please, Yahweh, don't um take away your Holy Spirit from me. You see. Which is a beautiful thing. Matter of fact, let me um let me get that real quick. Now I'll get it in sixteen eleven here. So I can go back to the other one in the blue letter. Okay, so Psalms chapter fifty one. This is something I pray for every day, you know, good prayer. But this is what um our King um David prayed for, man. Beautiful prayer too. It says, Hide thy face from my sins. Oh, Salakia. Psalms fifty one and nine. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O Yahweh, and renew a right spirit within me. See that? That right spirit, that perfect spirit, that 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 perfection. See? Don't think that the Lord don't know the heart, man. The Lord knows the heart, and he he's he loves a um a, a humble. That's why I always pray for um being humble and being contrite. He loves a humble and contrite spirit as well. You know. You should be praying for a humble and contrite spirit at all times because the Lord dwells amongst the meek, man. Roughly paraphrasing. Okay, but it goes on to say, cast me not away from thy presence. Verse 11, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. See? It says, then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. See? Having an upright and, and, and perfect and, and, you know, a contrite and meek spirit, the Lord, he'll set you up to be, you know, one of his, um you know, teachers. And it's real simple. You know what I'm saying? You just, we just got to do the work. We just do the work, man, according to the, the scriptures. You know, you got some, some guys that kind of try and get too deep. You know what I'm saying? You try and, you know, take it too far. But really, in reality, man, the, um, the, 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 this truth is simple. It's some, it's some dark sayings in it. Don't get me wrong. It's some, definitely some, some. Some stuff that you can be like, huh? Let's say, what What does that mean? You know, stuff like that. But that's why we need teachers. But the, the general milk of the scriptures, you know what I'm saying, is, you know, salvation for the for the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, which are the Israelites, and letting them know that they are Israelites. That's their biblical nationality. And, and letting them know, hey, look, you're not the names that the colonizers gave you. That's really simple. And then you can go off into some scriptures to, you know, to um, bring that to light. You let them know the true name of the Father is Yahweh, you know, which means he exists with the existing one. You let them know um, the true name of his son, Yahweh Shai, you know, which means that he's the Savior or Deliverer in the Paleo-Hebrew. 
And really, um, Luke chapter 1, you can just kind of breeze through that, and it, it'll give you exactly as to why the Lord is coming. He's coming to get the children of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, out of the hands of their enemies. And that's the good news overall, you know. So it's really simple, you know. We, you know, you're out on the highways and byways. Just give them the, the, the basics, um, the simple milk scriptures, you know. You, you don't have to try and go all super duper deep with them. I mean, if they're asking questions, you know, you, you can answer them, you know. But you want to kind of try and, you know, um, control the narrative, so to speak, to keep it basic. Because, you know, people be asking questions and they don't even know the, the basic, basic, basic stuff that they need to know. They want to, you know, delve off into, you know, a lot of, you know, meat of the scripture, so to speak. As opposed to, you know, you can't handle that meat until you, you get that, um, can't handle that meat until you get that milk. Because that milk is what's going to bring you on um, full circle into perfection, your uprightness, so to speak. So let's go back, though. I want to go ahead and finish this up. Again, that definition for um, perversity is a deliberate desire to behave in an unreasonable or unacceptable way. C contrariness. Look at our people. You can tell a woman, you know what I'm saying? Hey, look, you know, well, you should be shamefaced and you should be covered, mod um, dressed modestly. They'll tell you shit. Psh Fuck out of here, nigga. That's perverseness. That's because they're perverse. They're contrary to what the scriptures are saying. And then they'll actually tell you that they're Christians, too. So we know that Christianity has failed our people, man. You see? You got people out here again. You know, you can tell them something as simple as, well, you know, the, the scriptures talks about I'm um, not eating um, shrimp, crab, lobster, and um, all these other things. You know, they're an abomination to you. And they'll try and use New Testament scriptures that they'll take out of context and say, no, the law said well, we can eat anything now and not fully understanding the scriptures. That's a perverse person. That's a perverse spirit. Especially if you're showing them the scriptures and you're breaking it down to them precept upon precept and they still don't want to accept it. Like they can, you can see that they clearly can see it, but they don't want to accept it. Why? Because they're contrary in the spirit. They're perverse. And sometimes you got to get away from people like that, too. You have to, you know, stay away from um, certain people. You got to cut certain people off, you know, especially if it was somebody new being new coming into this truth. And you was like a person that just always smoked weed. You got this partner. You just always smoke, um, you know, blunts with blunt after blunt. You know, you're known for just blowing the house down. <laughs> you know, I used to be one of those people back in the day before I came in this truth. You know, you smoke the house down, man. Used to call a nigga chimney. You know, but if you come into this truth, you, you know that you have to give that up. So you're going to, you know, start to be, you know, you're going to grow and start to be perfected and um, be, you know, moving towards that that center of uprightness, you know. But you'll have that, that, you know, that friend, he'll ride by the Lord, of, you know, actually, you know, place a spirit on that nigga to ride by. <laughs> You know, he got your, you, you know, he, he blowing one and it's, it, it's that smell hit your, hit your, hit your nose. And he like, come on, bro, hit. Here you go. And you, you know, you want to be upright in spirit and say, nah, nah, bro, I'm done with that there, bro. You know, that's perversion. I'm not, that goes against what the Lord, anything that goes against what the Lord has said, that's perverse. That's perversion, man. You have to, you know, rid yourself of, 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 of shit like that and people like that. And eventually they're not going to come around anyway, especially after you're not dealing with them for a while. You're just like, nah, dog, I'm good. Nah, they keep trying to um, get you to go somewhere with them. Oh, man, what's going on with you, bro? You used to be my partner, man. We used to go out and do. You know, they're going to be, Scripture talks about that, how they're going to be wondering. And they're going to actually be talking shit about you. Oh, that nigga, he corny now. He ain't, he ain't into nothing that we used to be doing. He ain't about them hoes no more. He ain't, Whatever, whatever, you know, but that's that's you getting away from a, per, a perverse ass person because why you're you're being perfected and you're being changed. And that's very important. And it's truth, man. You know, you should be growing. So that was pretty much it on that particular one right there. But I did want to touch on. Let's get it again. Um, Psalms 18 and 23. It says I was also upright before him and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore, hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness, the cleanliness, the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. So. That's why it's important to, you know, hey, you know, things be happening. You don't want to. Um, scriptures talks about vengeance is the Lord. 
you don't want to um pretty much do evil for evil towards anyone just leave you know just let it go and the lord will handle it you know lord will handle it nothing of you nothing for you to throw up a quick prayer lord well you know what i've done you know you seen what 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 what, what happened you know, I didn't, you know, um, actually do what these people are um, accusing me of. That happens all the time. We, we, we go through that shit all the time because we are coming up against false accusers, you know, especially Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. He's a false accuser. He's our main false accuser. But our own people, you know, are perverse and they go against the law, statutes and commandments of, of Yahweh by Shimei was shy by not being a babbler, by not, um, you know, bearing false witness against your neighbor. By not, um, you know, doing all these different. See, it's the law, statutes, and commandments. They they were perfect. Loving your brother as you love yourself, knowing how to treat him. You're not gonna, um, you know, slander a a, a neighbor, man. You know what I'm saying? And you just, you know, the, <laughs> just you know, you just and deliberately doing it. You know, we our people. You see it all the time, man. Our people are deliberately perverse all over TikTok, all over YouTube, all over. Just just in the streets, just at the gas station, at the damn liquor store. It's just a bunch of perverseness around us. So you can clearly see that once you stop living that way, you kind of get these attacks. And that's why the scriptures talks about um, when you come into this truth, um, be prepared for temptation, so to speak. And worth to take it on cheerfully. I think that's, um, let's see here, it's Lockyer. And to go against these scriptures, man, is just to be, you know, you, it, it's, you're being perverse, man. Yeah, this is um, Ecclesiasticus chapter 2, verse 1, also known as the book of Sirach. It says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. See? So once you come into this truth, yeah, you're going you're gonna to be tempted on from every single angle. And it's going to be ongoing. It's not going to be something that's going to stop. See, you got um, these Christians... Christianity, white Jesus Christianity, they basically teach you that, you know, come and believe on Jesus and everything going to be all right. Nah, man, as soon as you come into this truth, you better be ready to rock, man, because <laughs> you, you've entered into a war. It says, set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. So see, to go against that right there, that would be to be um, to be um, perverse. If you were to make haste in time of trouble, that would, you would be going against the scriptures and you would be perverse at that point in the game, so to speak, you know. It says, cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at the last end. This is the direction that you, 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 you being perfect and upright is listening to exactly what this is saying and doing it. It says, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him, and he will help thee. Order thy way aright. See? And trust in him. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest ye fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. See? Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good, and for everlasting joy and mercy. But overall... If you notice, he, keep, he keeps saying hoping in the Lord, hoping in the Lord, trusting in the Lord. That's a part of that perfect. That's that perfected circle. Trusting in the Lord. That's a part of being upright, trusting in the Lord. Having faith in the Lord, you know what I'm saying? Because the average person, like I said, again, they, if they don't have faith in the Lord and they just moving carnally, man, they perverse as hell. That's that's generally everybody that you around. That don't call on Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. They're, those are perverse people. So why get upset when they do certain shit? You know what I'm saying? You just say, <laughs> steer clear of them as best as you can. And, and if they wrong you, you know, don't don't get all crazy about it. You know, just pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. You know what I'm saying? And he'll get, he'll he'll reward you. He'll get um justice for you. If he know for a fact, nah, I didn't do anything wrong. That's this is pretty much what David is saying. I mean, um, this is what um what's being said in his songs right here. Let me see, is that a, uh, yep, this was a Psalm of David, so like you, this is pretty much what King David is saying here. He's saying, I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. See, because when you go up into the situation with David and, and, you know, King Saul, King Saul, 
could have been killed, man, by um David, man. David had the opportunity to kill um uh, Saul. But he was a man that was after the Lord's heart. He had that integrity where he knew not to touch the Lord's anointed. See? Now, did David do all kinds of shit? Yeah, man, David, man, <laughs> David should have been put to death for a few things. Of course, you know, um, committing adultery with um the brother's wife. Matter of fact, putting him on the on, on the front line of um having him um pretty much killed. I mean, he went through it. He had some things he had to go through because of that, you know what I'm saying? But the actual punishment that he should have gotten for what he done he didn't get you know because the lord had mercy on him you know and we need those sure mercies of david you know the mercies of of, of our father yahweh man that's the reason why he sent his son yahweh shai for the elect of israel man you know we're praying again you know that we're part of that hopefully elect. but let me go to um i wanted to go to the book of Job real quick verse one to show that that word perfect and upright it has the same meaning in the Hebrew, verse 1 right here, Job 1 and 1, it says, There was a man of the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, see? And one that feared Yahweh and it skewed evil, see? So let's go into it, let's see. See this word perfect right here, H um eighty five thirty five. It's the same word, Tom. But then you have um upright, H thirty four seventy seven. Yes, sir. So let's see this um upright one. It says straight, upright, correct, right, right, literally or figuratively, convenient, equity, jasher, uh, jest. Please, well, well, righteous, straight, upright, okay? Let's see here. To be right, to be straight, be level. So let's go back and get this other one, though. Um, the word perfect. See, it says complete. Perfect, complete. One who lacks nothing in physical strength, beauty. Okay, that's not it. Sound, wholesome. Complete, morally innocent, having integrity. That would pretty much be your meaning right there for this particular one. One who is morally and ethnically pure. See? Complete, usually morally pious, specifically gentle, dear, coupled together, perfect, plain, undefiled, upright. See, and so by us being covered by Yahweh, by Yahweh Shai and what he done, his blood, man, that, you know, that, that kind of seals the deal. But, you know, at the same time, too, he said that if you love me, you keep my commandments. We do what he say to do. And that comes off into that, that roundness, that soundness, that completeness, that uprightness, man, that perfectness. Because if you just out here, you know, like I said, again, you got these Christians, they'll tell you, yeah, they believe in Jesus, but they don't do nothing he say. And we already know that the Lord's name is not Jesus. Just that in itself, that's perverse. Because you can even explain that to him. Well, you know the Lord's name is not Jesus. The letter J was invented in 1524. Um, there's no letter J in Hebrew. And these people actually tell you, well, his name doesn't matter. That's perverseness. What do you mean his name doesn't matter? His name is it's the most important name in the world. As far as getting through to the Father. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, uh, it doesn't matter what his name is. What do you mean? It's perverse for them to even tell you that he's blonde haired and blue eyed. They'll tell you that his color don't matter. After you show him in the scriptures, well, he couldn't be a so-called white man. Well, his color doesn't matter. He loves everyone. That's perverseness. That's being perverse. That's actually being a damn antichrist. You can go off into <laughs> to that as well. That, that That's being a damn antichrist, man. The Antichrist is not going to, anyone that's Antichrist or, and there's multiple Antichrists, it's not just some man that's going to pop up out of nowhere and he's got this suit and tie on. No, there's many, there's billions of Antichrists. Anybody that don't believe on the scriptures the proper way, they don't believe on the, on the, on the, on the word, like, like how it says, they get to adding to and taking away and one, well, I don't believe that part in my opinion. No, it ain't not about your opinion. It's about the truth of the scriptures and you have to, you know, um, be properly taught 
by the men of the Lord through the Holy Spirit, you know what I'm saying, to get the proper teaching. Because a lot of people, they just don't know what the hell they're talking about. They believe in some of everything. Man, there's so many doctors. There's thousands and thousands of doctrines out here. And just so happened that the Lord awakened us. If you're listening to this video, you know, awakened me to actually know what the real truth of the Bible is. That's special, man. That's 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 like hitting the big game there, baby. For real. That's like hitting the big game lottery, baby. <laughs> like for real, for real. Because he's not going to show it to everybody. It's not for everyone. So you have the elect, the upright, the complete from the from the beginning of the world. That's who the elect are, man. You know, you're going to have elect that's going to be awakened that 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 have lived all kinds of lives. It's brothers out here, man, that's in this truth, man. It's them been in, that lived up that that's the, done all manner of wickedness. So what I wanted to do with this lesson was just to kind of show like the differences between, you know, um, what, what it means basically to be perfect or to be upright. You know, it's not like something that we haven't sinned before and we're not, you know, uh, uh, you know, we're just this, these perfect people out here and we're not sinning. We Yeah, we sin on a day to day basis. Little things that we don't know. You know what I'm saying? We might be, done, you know, uh, uh even even having a um a foolish thought is sin to the Lord, man. You know, it's all kinds of shit fly through our head all day long. Something as simple as that. It's all kinds of you know, um um law, statutes, and commandments that we can't properly keep because we're in captivity. So we're sinning on a day to day basis because we're going against the law. You know? Cause what's um um sin? Transgression of the law. And we're we're not keeping one hundred percent of the law perfectly, but we're keeping what we can perfectly. But the Lord sees our heart and he knows our mind. And through Yahweh's side, the blood of the of the, the ultimate sacrifice, that's what makes us perfect and upright in his sight if we believe. And we're doing our best and we're not out here. Remember what that word um, um, um perverseness said. It says to to um matter of fact, let me see if I still got it up right here. It says a deliberate desire to behave in an unreasonable or unacceptable way. See, we're not deliberately just getting up like, oh, you know what? I know that bitch got a man, but still she fine as hell. I'm going to go and deal with her. Nah, man, you're not going to de de deliberately. Well, uh, you know, shit, I'm hungry, man. I, I ain't had no pork in a while. It's just a piece of bacon. You know, when you got a damn slice of pe pizza and uh, oh, well, I could just take the pepperonis off the top. Ah, oh, man, you know, that's deliberately being wicked as hell, man. Just, you know, chill. We're not, you know, overall, we're not like that. We're not deliberately. No man of the Lord that's in this truth or woman that's into this truth should be deliberately doing shit wrong, man. You know, you deliberately doing it. Nah, man, you know. Generally, you know, uh, uh, when we're sinning is, is overall something that we don't have no control over. Like going to Jerusalem three times a year. I can't go to Jerusalem three times a year. I probably can make an effort, you know what I'm saying, to try and, you know, but with today's thing and today's time, this man is going to want me to roll my sleeves up, take a bunch of damn shots, do this, this, and this. I got to try and go through another so-called white man to try and even get the damn days off to do it. Got to try and get the money up to do it. Make sure, you know. But that boat been sailed, you know what I'm saying, because we should have been doing stuff like that. You know, hitting Jerusalem three times a year, like the scripture says, or, you know, um, it's just all kinds of law, statutes and commandments that they're, they're, that's just impossible for us to keep in this captivity. Like eating lamb, you know, for the Passover. I don't have a farm where I'm growing my own lamb and, and he's one year old, um, a male without blemish. You know, I'm just kind of going to the supermarket and I'm giving me, you know, pretty much a small piece of lamb, you know, to just overall just replicate the day so to speak you know what i'm saying and i don't even know if that's a male or female or if it was without blemish he could have died of his own you know so i don't have no control over that so that would be a law that i would be breaking but that would be a law that's outside of my my control so to speak so we're not just deliberately out here just um breaking the law man we're not trying to offend the lord like that you should have fear of, of your how about shimmy on side well you wouldn't even go that route anyway you know, so we keep the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of our ability. And um, we're constantly meditating on, on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai day and night. You should be, you know what I'm saying? Throughout your day, 
your choices should be dictated by the scriptures. You know, you see somebody acting a damn fool and it's about to get to a point of a heated argument. You know, you a scripture should be coming to your mind. A soft answer, you know, kind of, um, you know, pushes away wrath, so to speak, roughly paraphrasing. Or being slow to anger, you know, using those scriptures, you know, those scriptures come into mind. That's you moving in perfection. That's you moving in uprightness. You know what I'm saying? You're doing what the Lord said to do and he'll handle the rest. Because guess what? If you go against what the scripture says to do, you're being perverse. Because I think it goes off into being crooked. Let me see here. Yeah, because it was another word on that. Let me see. Uh, I got to go back. Let's go back. Oh, I'm in Job. Let's go back to song. I'll end out here. I just wanted to just um, retouch on something real quick. Let's go back into this word iniquity. So it says perversity. Was that the word? Uh, let me see. Let's see right here. Was that it? To bend. Yep, right here. Um, to bend, twist, distort. See. So when you when you bend something, it's not in, the, in 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 its right order anymore. If you if you, if you distort it, it's not what it originally was. You see, you, you know, you get to you get to um pretty much you're changing things. It says a primitive root to crook, literally or figuratively, figuratively to amiss, bow down, make crooked, commit iniquity, pervert, do per perversely, trouble. Turn, do wickedly, do wrong, see? Yep, it says to bend or distort, to curve, to twist. It says to act perversely, to sin. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much a, it's pretty, pretty self-said there, man. So, you know, I'm end out there. I just wanted to just touch on, on, on the, on the words of, um, you know, um, you know, being perfect or upright and, um, you know, and just break down, uh, pretty much the differences in it. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, hey, we, we're praying every day that Yehovah Bashim Yamashah will not take away his Holy Spirit from us and that we'll get better and be able to move about in the spirit, you know, just staying constantly in the spirit, you know. But we're going to make mistakes, man. It's not going to be like, you know, um, we don't want to. And that's another thing about being perfected as well. When you when you do make a mistake, you feel horrible. You feel, you know, real remorseful. See, because a person that's perverse, they're going to be like, I ain't do shit. What you mean? <laughs> I ain't do nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? You're going to feel remorseful about um, letting the Lord down or... Um, you're going to just feel sorrowful, man. That's what repentance is about. And then you repent and then you get back up. Because like I said, again, um, the righteous fall seven times, but he gets back up. And that, that um, se um, number seven goes into perfection. Perfectness, that number seven. So we're going to fall. But what do you do? You don't deliberately fall. Like when you just pray to Yahweh, by Shimei, I was shy. Hey, I made a mistake on that. Yahweh, please have mercy on me. And you, um, pr you know, just pray for help and you keep it moving, man. Because, again, we're at war. He knows that we're at war. He understands that we have um, we're constantly on a day-to-day -day basis. It's going to be a spiritual battle, but it's all about how you're handling it. You know, and you want to pray that he'll help you handle it the way that he wants you to handle it. The way he sees fits through the word, through the scriptures as to how he said to do it. How he said to get down. So I'm going to end out there. I pray that the lesson was edifying. With that, Kwame Inshallah.